speaking from your dual experiences as an editor and a director, um, how does an actor's pace affect your edit of the performance and the scene? Um, it's one of the things, it's, it's really, uh, one of the things I focus a lot on set, um, and part of that is just a product of the fact that scripts are very overwritten these days. I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but they're often like an extra act per show, if not more. Um, so inevitably, um, the time, the, the scripts or the shows are coming in longer and longer, and it's really hard as a director to get time out. It's really hard as an editor to get time out with your producer. And so I've become really attuned to trying to create that pace on set and getting the cadence correct while I'm on set. Sure, as an editor, I can go in and I can tighten up. And we were talking about earlier creating overlaps. I'm going to create overlaps all day long on a show like Dynasty because it's fast-paced. There's not a lot of big, tearful moments in that show. A lot, and there's a lot of comedy. So each show dictates the rhythm and the, uh, the tempo of the scene. But my best uh, advice is to, to watch the show to feel, to get a feel for the rhythm of that show, because the final product is going to be the rhythm that they're they're going to be looking for, and almost every show I go to now, they're like, oh, the producers want you to make sure it's pacey, you know, which is a terrible note. <laughs> And I find, honestly, if anyone has any re recommendations to me, because I, I hate to go up to an actor and say, act faster, but sometimes I need you to, <laughs> because it's, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a scene, and actually it was a very emotional scene, um, and this was the, uh, a great actor, but it was his first day on set with another actor, and they were just making a huge, huge, huge meal out of the scene. And if you looked at it just by itself on that page, no other history of Dynasty or even that episode, which is actually how we had to shoot it that day, which was crazy. Um, it felt like it needed all of that, but I knew it didn't. And so I, my go-to has been, <laughs> if you don't start doing this quicker, they're going to cut it. <laughs> but it's, it's true. It, it will get cut if, if you go for the Emmy every single time it's gonna get cut. Um, my rule of thumb typically as a director and as an editor is usually there's one major beat per scene, maybe two. This is television, I wanna be clear because features is a whole different story. But in television, I, we're building to a one beat and that's, the, that's the, just the way it is. And you gotta build that bridge and I'm not saying don't act, but you know, f choose your moment and make sure you and the director know that moment and hopefully your director will tell you if you do or don't have that moment. But otherwise, talk. <laughs> um, but like I did a show, when I did Charmed, it was a totally different rhythm than a show like Dynasty. Dynasty's very, very, very fast paced. Charmed gave me some more room. It was fun for me. I could develop the characters more. I could develop the camera more. I could do that. But I watched shows and made sure I understood the, the tempo and the rhythm of that scene. And so I like to think about when you go back to show movies like His Girl Friday is a great example where that rhythm is on the screen. There's like barely a cut in the film. And if you can act like that, you're gonna be on the camera a lot. You're gonna be on the screen a lot. Because if the rhythm's going, I don't wanna cut. If it's working, why cut, right? So right. that's. But it's, uh, you know, and I've worked with actors where they're just saying their lines really quickly. Mm. And that's not what we want. We, we want you to have urgency. There has to be a reason that you need to get this out that it's really painful and that it's hard to say, so you're trying to get, uh, get to say it as quickly as you can. That, you know, you, if your director is not able to tell you what to do, you're gonna have to tell yourself. You're gonna have to figure out a verb, an action to take. Um, you're, you're challenging the other person. You're, you know, an, a, a really dynamic kind of action that you need to use to get that rhythm for yourself, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah, on that scene I was talking about, that's what we talked about. We, I sat down like, what can we do to make sense to make this scene faster? Like, I didn't just be like, act faster, let's go. Um, <laughs> we talked about like, you know, this, faster, is, funnier, louder. This, <laughs> this is a really serious scene and there's a lot of emotion, and there's a lot of things going on, 
but what, where's your sense of urgency coming from? Why do you need this to happen quickly? You need to get this, you know, and so we found ways to make that work. And I'm, again, serving another master, like knowing if this scene goes really slow, it's gone. Um, I hadn't done a lot of television <coughs> until I started uh, working with Dolly Parton. And the first show that I did with her was Coat of Many Colors. And, you know, in features, it, you, you cut the movie and you tighten it, you lock it, everybody, you know, we make the changes and, you know, print master it, done. Could be 96 minutes and 15 seconds. Not in television. Because we found out, you know, on the Dolly Parton show, it had to be 83 minutes and 24 seconds. Not 25. It could have been 22. So what I had to do was, you know, the, the director had these beautiful pan shots. Okay, that's nine seconds gone. Okay, what about that one? Okay, uh, cut, cut, cut. And then you're, you're compressing it. And so that's the big difference. I mean, and in features, I think most of the time, we're looking for redundancy. Because, like, it's always overwritten, you know, because you got to get past the, the person reading the script to green light the show, right. and then give it to the actor, and then he sees all these pages and pages of dialogue, like a soliloquy. And then at the end of the day, you go, well, geez, you know, we already said that in you know, act one, and then why are we seeing it again? And so that's where it's a, a little different. But, but I think this, the rules apply the same way because if I see an actor trying to milk the scene, I go, I'm cutting it. I'm cutting you down. I'm cutting you out maybe. You know. Well, and uh, one, one si bad side effect of that, too, is when you have to cut against an actor. It's a horrible thing to have to do. So, like, maybe you have given a beautiful performance, but the rhythm is slow and the cadence is slow, and so you have to up cut. And it never feels good. It never turns out good, but it has to be done that way, and it's just a shame because it, it, if you can find that rhythm yourself, then we're not fighting control. Back. So it's not always that you didn't do your job. Sometimes it's just... It's just out there in the cosmos. I would say most times. I mean, it's there you go. right. It's pretty rare that you're like, "Well, oh, this actor's terrible." You know, it's it's usually like, "Oh my gosh, we need time."